It's round two of Aurelia vs. Lavinia Stacks, but with Atraxa and niv Mizzet thrown into the mix. Find out who wins next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Just to let you guys know, I do have a Twitter page now, so feel free to check me out on Twitter, at Commander Replay. Welcome back everyone, playing some Aurelia the War Leader, uh, facing off against some nasty stuff today. We've got Dave's niv mizzet Para on deck, basically going to try to control the board and wheel into the Curiosity combo. Uh, next up we have an Atraxa deck, played by another Patreon supporter, Rogaku, and they said their deck is Spirit Tribal today. And then finally we have Fenrir Unbound, playing Lavinia Azorius Renegade, uh, interestingly going last again in the turn order, and we're going first, so that'll benefit us. We don't have nearly as crazy looking of a hand as we did last game. It's actually a little bit awkward because we don't have all of our colors, but we're going to start with this mountain right here. We have two players playing white and one player playing red. So this Felwar Stone should hopefully very soon be making both colors of mana for us. That's going to bring it back to our turn. Ooh, we draw into a Smothering Tithe. And Mystic Gate, I believe, means that the Felwar Stone can now make white mana. Let's find out in a second. And Volcanic Island means red. Yep, we can make four colors of mana. Sounds good to me. So, uh, yeah, next turn we're going to go for that Smothering Tithe, get that thing into play. And that should do wonders for our mana ramping. Although, Lavinia may cause some issues for our mana ramping. It's, uh, it's a little bit confusing. You have to read it a couple times. So, it's uh, white and blue for a 2-2. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells, so non-creatures, with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. And then, opponent can't cast any spell if no mana was spent to cast it. Counter that spell. So, last game they played a knowledge pool, and I thought that we could play a signet to get Kiki-Jiki out of the knowledge pool, but no, it doesn't work that way. We didn't spend any mana to cast Kiki-Jiki, so it actually gets countered on the stack, thanks to Lavinia being in play. Keeping Lavinia out of play, probably a pretty good idea. Notice Dave sitting on two mana. Hopefully he's not uh, going counter spell on our Smothering Tithe. Blind Obedience, pretty good. That will... Ooh, Blind Obedience actually is really bad against Aurelia. That's going to hurt our deck so bad. When Aurelia doesn't have haste, it's not nearly the creature that it is. Nope, here comes Counterspell on the Blind Obedience. So, uh, as we saw a few days ago, Blind Obedience is actually a card that, like, it's subtle and a lot of people don't use removal on it, but if it sticks around too long, it will win the game. Uh, especially if you're able to draw a lot of cards and have a lot of mana in play, you can just keep casting spells and wearing everyone down with Extort. It's much better than people give it credit for. So, uh, yeah... Glad to see that one go. So let's uh, drop a land, play the, the play the mana crypt, get the smothering tithe down, and then play the swiftfoot boots. Uh, I should have played the swiftfoot boots after the pure still paladin. Now that I'm thinking about it, but uh, life goes on. Looking at an extra card right there probably would have been a pretty good idea. Although uh, we can pretty reliably count on the fact that Dave is going to play a wheel at some point in this game because he almost always does. Ooh. Savage, he's going to pay the two into the Smothering Tithe. Interesting. He's going to lay down a Cavern of Souls. Naming dragons, I assume? Wizard. Oh, yep, yeah, makes sense. Uh, niv it probably the only dragon in the deck, although there are a few wizards running around. I think there's a Lab Maniac in there and a few other things. So, interesting. Dave decided to pay for the Smothering Tithe. I mean, it just that doesn't seem like the type of thing that you can pay every single turn. Like, we'll just get so far ahead. Kodama's reach for the Atraxa. Yep. <laughs> Dave's saying Smothering Tithe is busted. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I've only seen it a couple times. I haven't been playing a ton in the past week or so. Uh, had some life stuff going on, so uh, not so much magic of late, but getting back on the horse. And yeah, I think he's right. I think that is going to be a turn for Aurelia. As long as we have enough colored, which we may not. One, two, three. If Lavinia doesn't pay right here, we'll have enough colored mana for Aurelia. Nope, does not pay, so as long as nothing happens, we should be able to cast Aurelia. As foretold, gross. Brings it back to our turn, Mana Crypt Flip. Go in, Tails. Won the flip. Sacred Foundry. Go for the... let's see. Let's cast our commander. Uh, we'll play the Sacred Foundry tapped. Equip the boots. Get down to the attacking. One to Dave... Actually, we'll send both to Dave. I like what having six commander damage means more than uh, more than three. Three isn't so relevant a lot of the time. Six means we can do some stuff later on in the game, so uh, we'll, we'll go his way for now. Uh, we'll probably swing into Lavinia next. Nope, Dave's going to keep paying for that Smothering Tithe. I don't know if that's really the right call. I mean, I've only got two cards left in hand. He's just going to pass with two open mana. 
I mean, yeah, if, if opponents want to pay that every turn, that's essentially six mana that your opponents don't have, or two each opponent. That's a really big deal. That can stop a lot of things, slow a lot of things down, really gum up the works. Ooh, Atraxa also going to pay. I mean, at this point, I actually don't care that much. Aurelia is already in play. And the two things we have left are pretty cheap to cast. Looks like color-wise, we'll only be able to cast one of them. Yeah, we'll only be able to cast one of them unless unless Lavinia doesn't pay and we draw planes off the top. Demonic Tutor for the Atraxa. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Not really sure what they're going for, but board wipe, maybe? Opponent taking a minute to figure out this Demonic Tutor. So as foretold for the Lavinia opponent, and it's going to get a counter on it. Uh, Drax opponent said they didn't put very many board wipes in their deck. That's good news for us. Lightning Greaves for the Lavinia opponent. Brings it back to our turn. Mana Crypt flip. Go Tails. Won the flip. Hainware Battlements. Eh, there are better things. But play the Hainware Battlements. It's kind of looking for non-land right there. Uh, we'll play the Silverblade Paladin. We will Soul Bond with Aurelia. Then we will use the Hainware Battlements to give the Silverblade Paladin haste. Send Aurelia into the Lavinia. Silverblade into Dave. And Aurelia back into Lavinia and uh, Silverblade into the Atraxa this time. So Lavinia down to 28, up to 12 commander damage. Atraxa down to 36, and Niv Mizzet at 26 and 6 commander. Smothering Tide is going to trigger. This time he does not pay for it. Chrome Mox coming down. Time Spiral. So there's the wheel effect we were talking about. Oh my god, we get. Wow. Smothering Tide is really good against Dave's wheels. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, we just drew so many things. If no one has any removal, we can win the game next turn, I think. Yeah, double damage and grafted X and grafted war gear. Yeah, that should end the game. And with all these Smothering Tithe triggers, we will have mana to cast them. Wow, wheels with Smothering Tithe are so good. That is ridiculous. Uh, opponent's only board wipe gets wheeled away. And what's funny is that we drew into our own Wheel of Fortune, so we can literally cough out our entire hand, then Wheel of Fortune, and do it all again. Wow, that's so good. Oh, man. I did not even realize. Dave lays down a tandem lookout, uh, so that combos with his commander. We'll need to be killing him on his turn. Smothering Tithe will trigger again. I mean, even what's crazy about that, too, is even if anything happens, we can just recast our commander, give it haste. Well, it already has haste, but give it double strike if it needs. Wow. This is my anti-Dave Aurelia deck, by the way, that I haven't had a chance to test yet. This is my first time running it out there. So, you know, it's very similar to a lot of other Aurelia things that, I, that I've been doing for years. But the curve is a little bit lower. It's a little bit more focused. Has more ways to deal with blue cards and more ways to try to stop his combo. Uh, one that I was not expecting is that Smothering Tithe is really good against wheel effects. Here's a Beseech the Queen. So we bring it to Lavinia's turn. They'll get the As Foretold trigger. Let's see if they have anything on two. Smothering Tithe will trigger again. I believe they can cast their commander off of As Foretold. Oh, there's a Kataki's War Rage. That's not ideal for all of our tokens. Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, we're going to have to figure out how best to manage all of that. Fate Spinner. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player chooses draw step, main phase, or combat phase. That player skips each instance of the chosen step. Oh, man. What are the choices? Draw, main, or combat? Uh, probably skipping our draw phase, honestly. We have Wheel of Fortune, we can use that. So, step number one. Use one of these, play this Tithe at the end step. Uh, grab this Plateau. No, we're just gonna wheel, so we grab a regular planes. Go to our main phase, and then go back to our turn. Many, many things triggering right here. Uh, opponent did go for a Cleansing Nova with their, uh, Beseech the Queen, so we'll have to watch out for that. We're gonna skip our draw step, since we have a full hand. So we're actually going to do, we're actually just going to sack all of our treasures right here. So we're definitely paying for our boots. Yes, pay for the boots. Pay for our mana crypt. Flip the mana crypt. Uh, lost the flip. Gonna definitely pay for our Felwar stone. I actually could have kept more of our treasure tokens around, I think. Yeah, we could have kept half of them, so I could have played that a little bit better. Whoops. Okay, though. It's okay. I think we've got plenty of mana to do everything we need to do. Uh, so we skip our draw. Play the Plateau. Start with his Insult. Let's see if this gets countered. Dave thinking about it? Probably as a counter. Yep, there's Pact Indigation. So, free counter number one, down. Next, play the Grafted War Gear. Actually, get the Signet first. Tap the Signet. Tap the Fell War Stone. Play the Grafted War Gear. Attach the War Gear. See if Dave has any instant speed removal, because if not, it's going to be lethal. 
Plus three and double strike on Aurelia is lethal in a single turn. Send that into the Atraxa. So Aurelia into Dave. So Dave taking a massive hit right there. Send Aurelia back into him. And Silverblade back into the Atraxa. Dave's going to Pyroblast on the As Foretold on the way out. All right. I'm fine with that. So Dave goes down, attracts at 28, go to our second main phase. And the reason I wanted him out is he plays a lot of free counter spells. So uh, now we go for this Wheel of Fortune and do pretty much the same thing that happened last turn. Get seven new cards and get a whole bunch of mana. That's an Elish Norn. We're going to wait on that just because opponents are already into must-have-a-board-wipe territory. Did get rid of a nasty propaganda in there. Archangel of Ties. Disallow. Force an opponent to discard some stuff. Oh, do we just... Yeah, we force him to discard that Cleansing Nova. Nice. Wheel of Fortune. Messing people up. Uh, and then we're going to shoot the Kataki's War Wage. Could also shoot a player in the process. Uh, we'll shoot the Atraxa. Get this Thought Vessel into play. We play a land already. We have played a land already, and we'll pass the turn like that. Sit on this Red Elemental Blast. We can stop any Cyclonic Rifts that may happen. Atraxa coming into play. Atraxa is slightly annoying for Aurelia. The Although we have 6-6 six, six double strike, so uh, we can actually kill the Atraxa before it deals combat damage. The death touch can be annoying, though. That has slowed me down quite a bit in the past. I guess also if we need to, we can shoot it with the Red Elemental Blast. Drog Skull, Captain. Eh, more blockers. Dream Halls for our opponent. Uh, well, that's, that's going to be a counter for sure. <laughs> counter the Dream Halls. Glad I held that up. That card can cause some problems. Don't know if it always works right on Magic Online either. I think that's one that's prone to uh, getting bugged. So Fate Spinner is going to trigger. Skip or draw step. Go uh, Tails on the Mana Crypt. Lost the flip. So play a land. Oh, we can give the Elish Norn haste. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So start tapping up some mana. Get the Elish Norn into play. And double strike. Whew. Seems pretty good. Use some of these tokens. Elish Norn into play. Give Elish Norn double strike. Give Elish Norn haste and do some attacking. Attack like this. So Atraxa gonna block, but the Atraxa goes down. Uh, and attack the same way. So send the uh, the two creatures into the Lavinia opponent and Aurelia into the Atraxa. Actually, I think Atraxa is gonna survive. Yep, they survive at eight. Oops, probably could have did my combat math a little bit better right there. But Lavinia does go down, and that is good news. Here's a keg of the Tide Star. It's a little bit annoying. Do we play a Homeward Path yet? Uh, I shouldn't matter too much. Tails on the flip. Won the flip. Draw into a land. Play the land. Go to combat. Swing everything. Yeah, they should be dead before the Kega Tide, before the Tide Star trigger resolves. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh, gonna steal a Silver Blade Paladin, huh? Uh, Silver Blade Paladin dies. I mean, this, is, this should still be lethal. <laughs> there it is. Boom! So, really taking down some pretty good opponents this game. Again, we went first, which is a pretty significant advantage. I think Dave paying for the Smothering Tithe actually hurt him quite a bit. Uh, it just slows you down so much. And, I mean, we're getting a token, yes. Tokens and ramp are good, and they can allow you to do things. But paying two of your own mana to stop it? Ugh, it seems, seems questionable. However, the thing that was really crazy was the two wheel effects into the Smothering Tithe. Just absolutely ridiculous. So uh, that was really, really cool. I'm glad we got to see that. But yeah, I'm really able to come out ahead uh, against some pretty powerful decks. Also, as I mentioned earlier, very lucky to be going first against the Lavinia deck. If Lavinia's going before us, we're probably behind bars in the Stacks prison, and uh, it's probably a really bad time. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.